Hello everyone, Simcraft here, and welcome to episode one of what I hope to be a continuing series for Game Dev Tycoon. Game Dev Tycoon was recently released on Steam, but I've had it for a, full, a few months now. I I've been wanting to make videos on it, but I bought the Windows Store version, of course, and I don't have any software that's capable of recording Windows Store content. It's strange, uh, but... Anyway, so, welcome to Game Dev Tycoon. In this business simulation, you have been transported back in time to start your very own game development company right at the beginning of the PC revolution. In the next 35 years, you can build your dream company, create best-selling games, gain fans, and become the leader of the market. A couple things I forgot to put in here. You can also crash and burn. You can release one rating games, which do terribly and drive you bankrupt. You can do all kinds of things that could ruin your career in this game. So, <laughs> yeah. Before you start your adventure, you have to give your upcoming, your upcoming company a name. Okay. Let's see. So, player, we are obviously See Me Craft. There we go. And company name, how about Crafted Games? There we go. And there's a certain combination I like to do. Hmm. Is it that guy? Let's do that guy in a green shirt. Yeah. Oh, and s some of these references might go right over my head because I wasn't alive during the beginning section of this game. So, if you ever want to review the tutorial messages, then you can do so in the help menu. Blah blah blah. Escape. Congratulations, you've just started your own game development company at the moment. Your office is in the garage. And you are the only employee, but don't worry. Many successful businesses have started out this way. Let's start developing your first game. Close this message, then click anywhere. Yay! Achievement! Supporter! Yeah. Okay. So we'll develop a new game. Oh, great. Hold on a second. Uh, I, I don't want to... I don't want to have to go through this whole tutorial thing, so I'll just get us back to this point with a new game, so so that it'll work. Okay. All right, I'm back. Let's get this first game underway. So, let's see. What do we want to make? We should make a vampire RPG for sure. Okay, and we'll call it. Let's see, what would be a good name for Vampire Half RPG? How about... We'll call it Bloodlust. Yeah, that sounds like a good name. Okay. Ooh. Uh, okay, so what do we want to go for? I'm going to just develop the cheapest game possible so we can crank out the next game without fear of anything. So we're going to take it text-based, and we're going to start. Okay. Yeah, I know that. I, I said I would to, to skip the tutorial. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. An RPG. So we're going to put story quests all the way up. I'm gonna ignore the engine, and yeah, again, play right in the middle. I think that's good. We don't care about the engine, we just like gameplay. Yeah, game to- oh, great. I won't read the tutorial because I've already been through it, so I'll just skip it. Okay, bloodless. Alright, so I think in RPG we're going to need a lot of dialogues. I don't think the artificial intelligence is as important, so we're just going to be having you know, we're going to be having the vampire bats, and they're going to be, like, biting the ceilings and stuff. It's all going to be fine. 
Now I remember the version of this game that I played before the Steam. They you always started with the same base talk. So yeah, we'll give it the basic sound. I think we're going to go with a lot of world design. Oh, and something I learned during my last playthrough, despite it's text-based, you and like there's only so much graphicalness I believe would be involved in text-based games. If you just turn the slider all the way down, to, it, the game will get angry at you. It's going to be like, hey, that was terrible. There should have been better graphics in a text-based game. Alright. So we've got four bugs. Okay. Yeah, I know. Finish button. Hopefully we don't get too many tutorial messages popping up. Alright. That'll... That'll do it. Fourteen in design, nine in technology. Okay, good. Bloodlust is ready. Oh, what does that button do? New topic, new combo. Apparently it was an amazing combo. Unless you're just showing off the level ups we're getting. What are you? Oh, so... Oh, you can change the name at this point. Cool. Yeah. Good judgment achievement. Awesome. Two achievements in about two minutes. Excellent. Oh, game reviews are in. Alright, here we go. Six, I like it by Star Games. Seven, beautiful, the informed gamer. Seven, nice experience, game hero. And seven, good game, all games. So that's a strong game to get us started. Okay. Oh, after publishing, you can... Invest a little bit of time to analyze your creation and generate a game report. Oh, this is new. Game reports are a great way to gain research points as well. Oh, cool. I, I, I want to do that just for the sake of doing it for the first time. Yeah, let's do a game report of Bloodlust. Alright, news, crafted games, a newcomer. News, Crafted Games, a newcomer in the game industry, has just released their first game, Bloodlust. The game received favorable reviews with such a good start, Crafted Games are sure to gain fans quickly. They will. Okay, so let's see what made this game good, what made it bad. I think that's what this essentially does. Alright, first week of sales, Bloodlust sold 6,414 units in its first week on the market. We made it in the charts at number 37. Good. Okay. Yeah, I know about that bit. Ooh, Bloodlust was so successful that we now have 31 fans. Excellent. Okay. So let's see. Our post analysis of Bloodlust is complete, and we got the following results. 1. Vampire and RPG is a great combination. 2. Graphics seems to be quite important for this type of game. 3. World design seems to be very important for this type of game. 4. Platform genre match. RPG and PC is good. Okay, so now we know for the future, if we want to make an RPG game, we should do it on the PC. If we... This... I'm not... Vampire RPG, graphics is important, and world design, and vampire RPG is a good combination. So, we learned a lot there. Alright, game reports. I should have read that. Alright. Sales record, Bloodlust has achieved a company sales record with over 10,000 units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of crafted games. Yeah. Okay. So what do we want to make next? We will make an alternate history strategy game. We'll call it... Hmm. What to call this? We'll call it something. We'll say if Rome never fell. That seems like a good title for an alternate history strategy game. Okay, so I think we'll invest a little more money into this one. We'll go for the 
Oh, so it tells us what's good. Okay. So let's go for the G64. Yeah, because that this is excellent. Because like I remember in the old game, I was like, well, I had to remember everything and be like, okay, was it action or was it adventure that worked well with the Xbox or something? So this is good. We'll do this on the G64. And yeah, 2D graphics. Why not? So we already have a hundred thousand dollars. And here we go. So let's see. Think for a strategy game. We want a good engine. We want our gameplay to be decent, but I don't think we need hardly any story and quests. Okay. The points seem to be doing well. Alright, so... Uh, I don't think we need as much dialogues. A lot of artificial, artificial intelligence because we want to be playing against good opponents. And we'll dumb it down on the level design slightly. Okay, cool. Okay, uh... Yeah, we'll add basic sound. We're going to turn the world design down design down a bit and turn up graphics. Yeah, this ought to be good. Okay. We'll fix the bugs. Oh, Budlust is now off the market. It sold 16,830 units, generating 1,070... no, 170,840 in sales. Cool. Now, overall, this isn't quite as good in points as the last one. So, yeah. And let's do another... Game Report, so... Yeah. Let's do a Game Report of If Rome Never Fell. Okay, here are the new reviews. Alright, it's... A 7. Six. Oh, enjoyable. Their focus on engines serve this game very well. A five. Alright, strategy games are cool on the G64. See, so now we know that, like, strategy works well on the G64. It's edge it is imported to strategy and stuff. Alright, here we go. So. Alternate history and strategy is a good combination. Level design seems to be very important for this type of game. Okay. So let's develop a new game. Let's do a... Well, actually, let's take a look. Is there anything worth researching right now? Yeah. Okay, so... We could research some new topics. Uh... Oh wait, and then the engine is 50 research points. Oh, recent market studies suggest that the Gavador G64 is steadily outselling competitors in the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lower price, greater availability, and the flexible hardware configuration over other home computers. Okay, so the G64 is pulling ahead. Experts say that this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. Oh, we better jump on this. So, we'll develop a new game. We'll do a hunting simulation. And we'll call it... I need to be careful not to name this something that something is already named. So we'll call it... Escaped Farm Animals. That's probably not how you spell escape. We'll call it Farm Animal Hunt. <laughs> yeah, so all the, the pigs and the cows and stuff have just, like, they're just exploding everywhere. But they escaped from their pens and now they're just running amok. Someone needs to just put them down and maybe get some meat off them. 
Alright, simulation. So I think gameplay and engine is going to be very important in this. Probably more engine than gameplay. This is going to be a really in-depth in depth situation. Simulation with this 2D graphics. Alright. Artificial intelligence. We'll bring up the level design a bit. So we're going to have smart chickens, that's for sure. So, 2D graphics. Let's see. I think I'll bring up the world design a lot and take down the graphics a bit. I think that would make for a good game. Oh. Uh, it almost seems like we're getting worse in technology and design points. Of course, design should be low because this is. and technology really high because this is a simulation. Oh, according to rumors, the Japanese company, Ninvento is planning to launch its very own home gaming console. Invento is known for the widely successful arcade game Dinky King. Many industry experts doubt that home gaming consoles will take off, but we are eager to see what Invento will deliver. Well, I, I may already know that I, I am a time traveler, as it said in the beginning. That's a lot of technology, I have to say. Alright, we leveled up in world design, that's good. I don't know why, but the Minecraft launcher just popped up in my face. Alright, if Rome never fails now half the market, it sold 17,383 units, generating 1, 121,716 in sales. The reviews for our newly released game Farm Animal Hunts came in. Okay, are we going up or are we fun at stages, star games? Their focus on artificial intelligence served this game very well. Perky but good, game hero. I like it, all games. Uh, yeah, we're actually going down in ratings. So, we should develop a new game for sure. Or actually, you know what? We are going to research custom game engines. Maybe a custom game engine will give our next games a boost in ratings. Alright, this is contract work. So now we can do contracts. Here. Yeah. Now a lot of this garage section is about getting that one big game. Alright, so we can develop our own game engines. So let's take a look at this. We could put in better 2D graphics, linear story, and a save game. But we can call it the primitive engine. I'd better not spell engine wrong, considering it's right up there. The primitive engine. Excellent. Yay! So our next game is going to have the primitive engine. One of the top engines in the business. Today, today Ninvento has confirmed recent rumors and announced their plans to release a new home gaming console called Tez earlier next year. The console features cartridge-based games and a uniquely designed controller. Cool. So when's... So... Early next year. So we have... Oh, do we have time? I don't know. T-E-S. System might come out. Hmm. Alright, so actually, we're going to save that gaming engine until our game on the T-E-S. Or the T-E-S. So we're going to do evolution. I'm not yeah, evolution simulation. On the We'll go for the Should we stay on the G sixty four? Or should I almost think that doing it on the PC would be wise since that's going to be around forever. And we can learn a lot about the PC, but 
we'll go for the G64. And we'll call it... Why not call it... Evolution. Because I am not in the mood to come up with a fancy name for it. 2D Graphics Version 1. Sounds good. Farm Animal Hunt is now off the market. It sold 16,324 units, generating... 114,296 in sales. Thank you to from Patrick and Jenny. Hi Seamacraft, we are the creators of Game Dev Tycoon and would like to thank you very much for purchasing the game and supporting us. Yay! Game Dev Tycoon is our very first game and it means a lot to us that you are enjoying it. With your purchase, you support our little startup and this will hopefully make sure that we can bring you more games in the future. Seriously, you rock. Thank you very much and have fun with Game Dev Tycoon. Patrick and Daniel Klug, Greenheart Games. www.greenheartgames.com Seriously guys, check them out. Cool game. And I'm sure they'll have lots more cool games to come. Okay. So, we are going to... Yeah, since our last game was a simulation game, we probably don't need to adjust too much. Alright. I believe it said that level design is really important in these. So we'll bring down our... No. We'll bring level design up, but keep artificial intelligence where it is. We have absolutely no dialogues in this game. We just have cavemen grunting. That's our dialogue. Grunt, grunt. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll bring up the graphics editor and bring down the world design a little. Let's increase the sound because, like, good sound is probably important in a good game. So we're going to have a lot of grunt dialogue, and but the grunt dialogue we do have, it's going to be, like, the most realistic grunts you've ever heard. That's where we're going with this. A lot of grunting. Okay. Now this one is more on the design side. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Oh, so we're leveling up a whole bunch of stuff, and I even level leveled up. Awesome. Alright, so we can research game tutorials and mono sound. Okay, so, since the... Tez isn't out yet. We'll research some stuff. Uh, we will research a new topic. I think our first game for the Tez is going to be... How about a military game? Alright, so the Tez is out. So we're going to need some money to buy rights to make games on it. Alright, so Seven Beautiful by Star Games. Six shows potential the informed gamer. I always put the in front of informed gamer. Eight very enjoyable game hero. Six quirky but good all game. So that averages out to six. I know it doesn't average out to six. It averages out to something. Let's take a look. Six point seven five. Don't scratch your head. Get to work. Okay, so this will bring us in enough money to develop a Tez game. Okay. So we will develop a new game. We will develop it on the Tez, which already surpasses the G64. We will use the primitive engine. Perfect for making grunts for cavemen. It will make it a military action game. And we'll call it... Hmm. What to call it? Oh, we'll call it... Modern... Assassin. That's probably not it. Assassin. I'm not sure if that's how you spell that. Here, I'll do something I do know how to spell. Modern Ninja. There we go. I know there is, like, we'll use the newest graphics we have. And I know that I think there is actually a ninja genre in this game. So we're going to give it a linear story and a save game, because why not? 
So on an action, I think we're going to want a lot of gameplay. We want decent engine. Some and mm, I don't think we need that many story and quests. I mean, the game isn't about having conversations with random villagers. It's about just going out and shooting some tanks with your ninja stars that come out of guns somehow. Okay. I love this game because I can make funny things and then make jokes about it. It's perfect. Again, we aren't talking to villagers, we're shooting tanks with n with ninja star guns. And yeah, let's see. We're, I think more level design and some artificial intelligence. Those chickens from the other game are going to be smarter than the tanks in this game. Which is why you'll be able to shoot them with ninja star so easily. Okay, and we will, I think, I want a lot, I think we want a lot of sound so you can hear metal on metal when the ninja stars hit the tanks. I've probably over, I've probably milked that dry, but world design is probably going to be somewhat important. So, a bit of an all-around thing, but graphics are going to be important in this. Okay, we've got high technology and design points, that's good. This is going to Ooh, Evolution is now off the market. Sold 26,592 units, generating 186,172 units in sales. Excellent. Done. Okay, Modern Ninja is ready. New record in technology and design. Leveled up some stuff. Good. Okay. So we are going to generate a game report for Modern Ninja. The first reviews of for our newly released game, Modern Ninja, came in. Okay, this is going to be a good one, I can tell. Eight, military and action is a great combination. Star Games. Eight, very good. Informed gamer. Seven, good game, game here. Oh, game here, where have you been? This is like the best game of all time. Nine, almost perfect all games. See, all games got it right. So that averages out to 8. Which is... Let's take a look at our game history. So we've got Bloodlust, 6.75. If I'm never fell, took a dive by half a point. Then this took a dive by another half. This came back up to 6.75. And that would be a... full point up. And then this came out, and that was, oh, Evolution, Modern, and then Modern Ninja is way better than Evolution, which is good to know. Okay. Our post-release analysis of Modern Ninja is complete, and we got the following results. 1. Military and action is a great combination. 2. Story and quests seem to be not important for this type of game. Okay, cool. So we're going to actually research some of this stuff too. Yeah, we're going to put in some game tutorials and mono sound for our next game. But I think I've been probably recording for long enough. If you guys want to see me continue with this series, drop a like, drop a comment. It will be much appreciated. And until next time. I've been Simicraft, and I'll catch you in the next episode.